No, it's fine. What's up, guys? Sean here from First Focal Point Podcast, sitting here in the shop. John's shop. Hey. Friend of the show. Host. Former host. And 14 Minute Firearms. That's technically still technically around, but not really. We're not social distancing, though. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, we have a treat for you guys. Uh, we have that in this box. M F M Maple Ridge Armory Renegade straight pull receiver kit that we got provided to us well we gave them money but um yeah provided to us from red deer shooting center in uh red deer alberta canada check them out rdsc.ca kurt hooked us up with that um because we're like we need ars and we need to scratch our itch and you can't have ars because this guy is prohibited so we're like what's the next best thing we decided that's it. So I like bolt guns anyway, right? Yeah. Ish. Ish. Sometimes. Sometimes. But yeah, so we're gonna build this for you and uh we'll go from there. So stay tuned. Okay, so we'll show you what's in the box. What's in the box? What's in the box? Uh, this is how it comes. Pamphlet from RDSC. Buy Red Deer Shooting Center shit. With uh their breakdown of everything they do. Yep. Foam. This is who wants to get foam. Ooh. Shiny. Lower. Zillow Siva. Looks pretty good. Um, 6061 aluminum. Anodized aluminum. Looks pretty good. Quality <laughs> looks good. There's no real tooling marks. Receiver has the serial number. That receiver as opposed to lower on these ones because the upper is what the registered portion of the receiver is. Yes. But the lower takes Air 15 pattern magazines, uh, Stanag, if you will, and Magpul, P Mags, that sort of thing. Um, same manual of arms as an Air 15, except uh, it's not semi automatic. So, um, can take drop in triggers, right? Yep. Um, From what I understand. And uh, yeah, pins, everything like that. Selector switch, just no uh, buffer. There's a buffer on there. Buffer but on this guy. You can add that on, but you don't have to. Well, I think you have to have a buffer. You have to have a buffer, sort. but it's not tied into the gas system. So no, there's no uh, there's those no that have, those of you out there that have built AR-15s in the past will notice there's no tube here for the gas tube to go through. Um, if we look at the bolt carrier. There's no there's no there's no gas. What the fuck is that thing on the bolt? The thing that's staked on the DI um, tube, if you will, the yeah, part that ties into the drag gone. engine system. Um, and it Mars really nice. Mars. Mars. What's the term? It mates. It mates. Mates. There you go. Really nice together. Um, you know, I don't know. It's great work by Maple Ridge so far. Well, let's take. Let's just say. I got. 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 I got the same with this stuff. So, this is a standard AR-15 bolt. So this thing here is going to take the uh, the bolt, firing pin, the retaining pin. And what the hell is that thing called? I don't know. It takes that thing though too. <laughs> it takes that part. <laughs> that thing with the stuff. There's a name for it. Yeah. So there's there's a, a marked difference here between the two yes. different re uh, bolt uh, bolt carriers, as you can see. Air 15 is a little beefier. Oh, there's just more material. This is a this is what they call a full auto bolt too. So it doesn't yes. have the commercial cut, but you know you get the idea. So. So yeah. Yeah. So you got the bolt in here, or the bolt carrier, if you will. Um, this is the receipt. Yeah, let's that's not, proprietary information. Let's not show that. On the <laughs> that's proprietary information. <laughs> on the video. We got the instructions. Oops. All the small parts. Yeah. That go with all this stuff, and then the Renegade rifle. It's the manual. The manual. We don't need those. No. <laughs> Actually, well, you do. You do. It's yeah. Read through the manual. What's really nice is the the. I'm not sure if you guys can see this in the cam in the, the screen or not here, but it lists all the tools you're gonna need. There, the the pictures are nice, good descriptions in the in there, color pictures, tells you what to grease, what to oil, all that kind of good stuff. So maybe give this a quick look first before you start, just in case you Agreed. skip a step. We got a sticker. There's a sticker. Deck a decal. A decal. If you're in the Europe's, but we're not, so it's a sticker. Suitable for uh, mounting up on your safe, safe or toolbox yeah. or the back window of your car. If you really want to be that kind of guy. Yeah, that's that. All right. We'll maybe leave the instructions out. 
Let's uh, shoot back in the bolt. Let me show you that in this guy there. Put this guy here. Yeah, and let's get into building it. That's all from the box. Okay, let's get into uh, building this thing. So where do we start, John? Well, first of all, we tore apart an AR already, so we got all the parts off the AR we need. And then there was also some aftermarket parts that we had on the AR that we're going to use in this thing. So there's obviously some stuff that we got the door tore apart already here. Um, we're going to start tools. I've got everything all laid out here. It's right where I hand. It's nice and handy. Okay, so let's start with the lower. It says to do the mag catch first. So I already tore apart the AR. We got bags and bags and bags of parts here. So this is all the bags of parts. So we got the mag release right here. Boom, boom, boom. Boom, boom. Boom, boom, boom. Is it boom, boom? Oh, helps if I put it in the right way, hey? Mm. Guess I could put it in backwards. Not that it really so matters. So what are you much. installing right now? So. Anybody who's built an AR-15 knows that uh, this is your mag catch here. It drops in the hole there. You stick the mag, uh, the spring on the other side. This is the deep. Uh, this is the thing with jigger you push on the mag, the mag release jigger. mag release button. The threaded mag release button that you push on top of the spring to compress the spring slightly. Push it in the hole. That's what she said. Nice and tight, tight like a tiger. And what? then you spin this because this is threaded into the the button. Yeah, until you get so far that you can't anymore. And so then now you'll notice here at this point, just like on an AR-15, the, the post is in a little bit. So my trick now is I take something like a like a punch that's larger diameter than the screw, and I push in yep. the mag release button using my... I found a taper one works pretty I found, good. I found my, my, my gargantuan belly. This is where it really comes in <laughs> handy. It helps having a, a, a protruding orifice to... To Your belly's an orifice? Orifice. <laughs> in certain situations. <laughs> there is a certain venturi effect when it comes to pushing my belly. Venturi. So now, here I've got it in a little bit far. And yeah, you'll notice that, that that screw is, is a little bit proud. Yeah. So now this is what I'm going to try and test oh. it for operation. It's not quite... I'm going to back it out a turn. Yeah. It's trial and error, right? Just like just like anything else, right? Yeah. yeah. You try it right. and you... Boom, just like that. So now when we depress the magazine catch, you'll notice it goes, it's no longer going into there, it's going all the way in, right? Okay. So all right, press the magazine button, make sure the catch does not scrape. Uh, may or may not have removed some finish there. This thing's gonna get yeah, you're gonna used and dropped on a bench. It's only anodized <clears throat> aluminum, so it's very easy to scratch, but we're not professionals by any means. He wrecked. Well, you are. Well, I don't know about that. Well, you, you got paid for building rifles. So well, once are. upon a time. <laughs> <laughs> Collect the trigger, spring, and housing. Well, that's going to be real easy in this case because we've got... What are got, we using for trigger? We've got a trigger tech. Ooh. Zero creep. Which one? The the limited. This is the one that uh, when we were doing gunning around, the trigger tech sent me for that uh, yeah. my, my AR build. Um, before the ban. Before the OIC. <laughs> funny story. I think I got maybe 20 rounds on this trigger. Yeah. Before the thing was prohibited, so it is what it is. So but you're using it for this. You can use it on this thing. So we're gonna drop this in here. So you drop it into the corresponding hole in the trigger. Whoa! And it's fit. it's not that easy, is it? Yeah, uh, it looks like it. Man, you take the corresponding trigger pins from your AR-15 build. That's right. And push them well, in the hole. Well, in 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 actual truth here, I didn't actually uh, take. The parts, all the parts out of my AR, it took the major components. Yeah. But I had a bunch of spare parts like but pins. But the idea and so is that, so. You, you could strip your AR upper and lower. That's right. And use the parts off that, right? Yep. So. So now if you're familiar with uh, Trigger Tech triggers, you got to uh, uh, tighten these two screws here. And I'm sure there's a a proper... Torque. Sorry. An, I don't think it's a proper torque, but there's an allocate that comes with... The trigger tech trigger. I've got these handy dandy screwdrivers that shout out to Vera, Vera Tools. Vera, 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 they're German, so probably this is German, so they're yeah. good. Okay, it's in there. You can adjust it after the fact, too. You sure can. So, for the sake of this video, I think we're pretty well. That's it, that's it for the trigger. Well, it's a trigger tech, so like you're not it's... easy peasy. There's yeah. no springs, there's no Fucking around. It's... And then there's some adjustment here, too. We decided yeah. to adjust the trigger pull later. We can always adjust it with that thing there. But this is just assembly at this point. 
Yeah. Good. Cool. What's yeah, next? Place with the hammer and spring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's test the function trigger controlling the fall of the hammer to prevent it from striking. So test the function of the trigger while controlling and the fall of the hammer to prevent it from yes. striking and damaging the so, ball. So let's make a note. You should never drop a hammer on an Air 15 platform trigger yeah. to risk damage to the trigger and or receiver. See, it's going to hit right there hard yeah. if you let it release. And it's only aluminum, tension. so it's not hard to dent that shit. So. That's right. Safety takedown pin, pivot pin, and grip. So I've also got this uh, fancy schmancy uh, trigger tech uh, safety. So it's dual, it's uh, ambi, so I'm going to put it in ambi. I generally speaking on an AR don't care much for an ambi triggers. It's not my not my thing. But, but they are handy. They are handy. And uh, I suspect on this thing, I'll, I got to want a safety on both sides. I'll lever on both sides because... Um, you, you can lock. swap the handle, the charging handle, back and forth. Yeah, and you can change side. it to lefty or right, righty. Yeah, like you said, it's a complete ambidextrous upper, right? So one thing I've seen a lot of guys that are on the that have done these builds on the internet already. They got the the, the charging handle on the left hand side. Uh, we're gonna do something different than that because I'm fussy. Safety's in. Detent, spring, and grip. This is the detent spring. Oh, well, that's not the safety detent spring. This is the safety detent spring. And it's a, the special one that came from Trigatech. Yep. Trigtech. Trig, trig tech? Trig trig tech. Trig tech. Shout, shout out to Mark for graciously providing the trigger. This is where the third hand comes in handy. We're not talking about the baby hand. That's right. That's something different again. It is completely different. So I'm just, I'm trying to be a good helper, guys. <laughs> Try. All you're doing is cluttering up my workspace. God yeah, damn. well, you'll get over it. So which spring do you think? For what? What's those? Those are the detents. Well, those are the detents for the bolt handle. We'll get those out of the way. Okay. This guy here is for... That looks like yeah, the... it is. That's a detent. That's a detent. Hmm. Bolt, 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 bolt. This guy here will go in here too. So, now this is where I might diverge from the instructions. I've got this fancy adjustment screw. You can see it's got rubber on the one end, Allen head on the other. It drops in right here. So because it's in there, it adjusts the tension between the upper and lower when they're mated together <clears throat> and because it's in there it's underneath the grip and if I do the grip now you're stuck with I the won't tension. be able to adjust this for tension right mm -hmm. so let's just maybe leave that off for now let's maybe drop that detent what you follow the, the instructions well if I follow instructions I can adjust that later oh fair enough what I could do though Put the rear detent in now. So one thing you'll notice here too is that the the detent and spring for the rear takedown pin go up from the bottom. So when you drop this guy in, you don't want to have it facing back like you would on an AR. You're going to want it facing down. So that's in place there, more or less. Well, well it was. It was. Just want to make sure we're on the right page here. down spring I may or may not have already cut the spring like it says to the instructions so now if we put that in place come on girl come on baby love my boy. there we go it's in place is that a little too much tension on there mm. might be Oh, well, screw it. Let's do it live. <laughs> We're going to put the uh, safety detent back in. We're going to take the safety spring. Insertion. 
Now, one thing you got to be careful with on this, guys, is that if you screw up or you have to take the grip off when you, um, what if for whatever reason now that you've depressed that spring, that spring could go pew, yeah, and it's gone. And yeah. for anyone who's built an AR-15 in the past and you built it in a carpeted <clears throat> area, you've spent time <laughs> looking for on your hands and knees for that that spring. So. Just be very cognizant of what you're doing with that because there's too much tension on this spring. It's too much. Trial and error. Right? It's too much. So I'm going to I'm gonna cut this spring down just a little bit more. So what's working for John here might not necessarily work for you guys. Yeah, well, this is obviously going to be something you're going to have to do a little trial and error on. You're going to have to play with it a little bit. I'm going to cut three coils off, and I'm not sure if you can see that. If you listen carefully, though. Bing! <clears throat> and then I'm going to drop that back in so Good news is springs are cheap. So are they? Are they really? If you screw it up, you can always go get more. From your LGS, your local gun store. Or you could just buy a whole spring yeah, kit exactly. in it for the one spring. Yeah, exactly. Which is usually what I do because I <laughs> have no morals. I mean, well, morals. Well, no, that too. Did I say that out loud? Yeah. Why is that thing not depressing? Uh, I want that. Oh, well, there you go. See, that's exactly what I was just talking to you guys. So he pulled the the grip off, and the spring went flying, which is right by your foot. Oh, I see it. So we're very lucky it fell perfectly where we needed it to, but like I said, it could pose a potential issue. So, well, Butterfinger is John here. Jeez Louise, I'm having a terrible time today. Am I going to cut this thing again? Seriously? Is there, Seriously? So there, why are you cutting it again? Because there was too much tension on the pin, I couldn't actually get the pin to move with a punch pushing the on it. The takedown pin. That's right. Yes. But, now that I've got it, let's get the safety detent out of there. There's the safety detent. It's still, it's still, see this moves nice. But when I put that detent in there, it doesn't. I wonder if I should try the other one. Maybe that's probably, a plan. Probably a good call. Wouldn't hurt. How bad could it possibly be, right? It could potentially be kind of strong. So this pin, <laughs> this pin is a little bit cranky. It's got uh, one edge that's got that's kind of uh, a point. A point. The other end is flat. So, and looking at the other pin, that's exactly the same thing there. Maybe that's what I did wrong. But now, and also in another. In, point to note you see how john feathered the vice in this is only 60 61 aluminum guys you don't want to put too much pressure on it because you could potentially mar a finish mar you could you could deform something so hmm don't lose that spring i've got like nothing at all on my well that would be why you used the wrong spring no, I got the right spring for the safety. Spring. I forgot to put the detent back in. Oh, that would be it. Let's do that. Let's follow all of the assembly guide instructions. <laughs> Not just some of them. Maybe you shouldn't deviate from the instructions. <laughs> yeah, I, I, say, and I, say, I say nice things to your face. I know, right? There you go. That sounds good. How does it feel, John? Nice, firm safety. It, it'll work in. And... There we go. Captured takedown pin. Exactly what you want. Okay, so. No. Screw. Screw. <clears throat> Get her down into the hole. Snug it up. Oh. Movement. Movement. Come on, darling. Almost had it cross started there. That would yeah. have been. Uh, and you, you notice how John used an Allen screw for this instead of a, the standard slotted or flathead? Yeah. Because um, it's such a pain in the dick to get in there and do it. Well, I have a special screwdriver for your flathead screws that would probably work very well for that yeah. to get it started. There, but it's still, there. slotted screws are a pain in the dick. Anyway. So. so nice, safe. Nice and tight, nice and tactile. Bang, bang. We're in business. Safe. Bang, bang. Okay. Now do the front takedown. 
the safety on. Now for the fun part, yeah. Okay, this goes in. So this is very similar to an AR-15 right now, like the. Yeah, it's pretty much. The build method, anyway. There's some minutia, as you guys can tell, but let's let's turn the page. Maybe there's a trick to this thing. Maybe they've got maybe they've got some special thing that a guy could do. Mm, oh, it. just says to put a punch in there. Actually, kind of makes a little bit of sense. A little bit. You want something? Where's the one that I had in there? There you go, buddy. Here we go. There we go. I'm helping. <laughs> So what, why you put a punch in there is to depress the spring and detent so you can adequately install the forward takedown pin. So now, now you'll notice the forward takedown pin and the spring is being held in place by this punch, right? So now we're going to take this pin. Now again, you're depressing the spring, so if you lose pressure, that thing's going to go flying. So now you'll notice here that I've got this channel and those detents facing the wrong way. And there's a reason for that. Because I'm, I'm currently holding on to that in place there. I'll turn that around. You can listen really carefully. Or don't listen carefully. Yeah, because okay. it's not there. <laughs> Look at that. She's stuck. No, the spring is... I'm not sure if the spring is stuck or if uh, the spring is short. So you need a pick or a hook. Now be careful not to lose it. No, I think there's no tension on that spring. Well, I know how to fix that. That spring. I guess I have a bad spring here. Who would have thought that that DPMS parts kit I bought back in 2003 would come back to bite me in the ass like this? I don't know actually when I bought it. It probably wasn't 2003. Okay, so how much more space do I have to make up in there? That's annoying. See, that's what happens right there. See how that Detent is flush. It's not supposed to be. Not supposed to be. There's supposed to be adequate pressure there. So, we need to add a spring. So let's pause it while we look for a spring. Okay. So after after some fiddle fucking around, so I took that that punt that pin I was looking for and I took a I, hook. I took a hook and I modified it. Modified it slightly. But it worked. So I got it out. This, well, now, why do we think that that didn't work? I think I trimmed this string at some point in the past, or it's an undersized spring. But you see the difference in length between the two springs? The shorter one here is the one I had in there. The longer one is a factory fresh new one from my handy dandy emergency parts bin. So <laughs> that's why you got that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So let's see here. How much of this spring sticks out of this thing when I drop it in there? This is a factory length AR spring. That's about right. It's Rookie right at the, mistake. It's right at the bottom. So, let's get this guy in here like so. You guys see what I'm doing here? Kind of, sort of? Kind of. And drop that guy in the hole. It's your home. Go home, ball. There we go. There you go. That feels better. Captured with the punch. Get Same process, just in reverse now. Oh. Let's see if I can do this without losing a spring or a detent. I'm not sure how many more of these I got. Okay, she's in the hole. Ready? There it is. Ting. Tink. Click. Boom. And you're in business. Front detent is in. How does it feel? It's a little tight. Like an NEA tight or uh, no. Northeastern well, Arms AR tight? I don't or? know if it's Northeastern tight, but it might be tool tight, which means i got to push on it slightly yeah, to get it it'll, open. That'll wear in, guys. That'll That's wear in. something to be concerned this, about. This isn't like an AR where you're going to take it apart 55 times between cleanings and stuff like that, right? So you never is... know. You might. Psst. Depending on the gun owner. True enough. So. Anyways, that's our lower. Looks like she is fully assembled. Yep. So we'll set that aside for now. Yeah. Safety's on. Detents are out. Good to go. There we go. That's the lower. Here, John, and we'll take that. Okay. okay. I will you know. Take that. Take that. So what's next? Well, let's look at the handy dandy instructions. Okay, let's put some of the stuff away. Clean up the work safe, uh, the workspace a little bit. Get it all out from underfoot, as it were. Put the Allen keys back where they belong. 
And this is the cleanest I've ever seen your bench, by the yeah, way. Yeah, I know. It's pretty awesome, hey? <laughs> all, all it took was COVID in a band to sl- <laughs> shut down my business in order for me to clean up my bench. <laughs> we laugh, but we're okay. actually dying inside. <laughs> so we've got the detent done. All these are done. So the MRA re- Renegade Receiver Assembly. So we we purchased this tool as well when yes. we ordered the kit. Now, is that necessary? Uh, here's the problem. Like, uh, when you're building an AR, you have a clamshell like this that goes around the receiver, like so, or and it snaps block. around there, yeah. and, and that's what holds your receiver straight. Uh, obviously, the MRA is a different outer dimensions and probably inner dimensions from an AR, so it's not going to go in there. It's not going to work. Proprietary. A guy could alter this, but, why? um... Why, for one, for another, this is the only one I will ever be able to get because apparently the CBSA is not allowing these back into the country yeah. anymore. So, does that mean I have a prohibited tool? Probably. Anyways, that's good to know. So, what is this this guy here? So, this guy here, you clamp it in the vise, and it goes on the on the barrel, goes in the barrel splines like so, and keeps the barrel from turning. This in is, theory. In theory. This is a fabulous idea if you're putting on muzzle treatments on an already built rifle or something like that. I think that's awesome. Um, problem is this. You take your barrel nut, and this is what a guy should always do first anyway, is you want to check to make sure that your barrel nut is going to spin on those threads without any resistance, or very let, little. Let's be 100% honest. This is our second upper. This is our got. second upper and our second... Uh, and the reason what happened the last time is these threads were, uh, this is the same barrel nut. So, and it spins on this receiver just fine. The last receiver, it, it would give on about one and a half turns, and then that was it. It was it was tight, really, there, really tight. There was, well, we think there was a, a excess amount of anodizing on the threads. Perhaps. And as, as we were torquing on the barrel nut, we were cutting threads. So what was happening was this. We're, we've got this pin in this receiver, like so in that hole and this tool into the barrel so the barrel isn't going to move period dot right but i'm torquing on this barrel nut against the receiver and we and we were told uh, we, we actually sent an email and they said just muscle it on it'll yeah, go on just it on. muscle it on and we checked this this and we're, we're both pretty portly individuals like yeah with, yeah when, <laughs> when we decide to torque on something we can get stuff done yeah well, I'll put it this way. I'm used to torquing barrels onto 80 foot-pounds. So putting on an AR barrel nut at 30 foot-pounds, it's not going to be a problem. The problem is this. With this not moving, like this, and this applying a, a, an excess amount of torque against the barrel threads, what I'm essentially doing is I'm turning hard on the receiver, and the only thing that can move is the receiver. The which, barrel's not going to move. This isn't going to move. Which, in turn, hits... When this is back on here... Yeah, when this is on like this... And you can see that that pin, that's all that's stopping it from moving in the, in, in right. the aluminum, in the 6061 aluminum. So when, when we were torquing on the on the upper, you're actually putting undue pressure on that point, yep. which damaged the threads and yeah. damaged the part. Basically so, what happened was it just basically made this hole twice as big as it's supposed to be. Yeah. And But shout out to Ryan and the guys at Maple Ridge. They, yep. they stepped up and sent us a new one. They sent so. us... Sent us a new receiver, and uh, that was great of them. Uh, they could have said, you guys are a bunch of morons. Yep. Uh, in our defense, we we noticed that it was tight, and I was like, well, it might be my cheap Chinese handguard, uh, my barrel nut, but we tried it with a DPMS, an Armalite, a Smith & Wesson, and yep. uh, a couple other barrel nuts that we had, and all of them were tight. I grabbed uh, an AR-15 upper receiver, and they all went on the AR-15 receiver, so I firmly believe that these threads were just a little bit out of spec. Yeah. But that's neither here nor there. They uh, made it right. Made it right. Took a couple extra weeks, but that's okay. It's winter time anyway. Right. So and COVID. So. All right, let's get to it. So let's build this up. Or you build this up, or while I stand here. Sure, you. sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> so one thing I'm going to do differently this time that I didn't do last time is I am going to well take this muscle yeah. treatment off. There's no. It, it's just in the way right now anyway. So, muzzle treatment's off. This is a 14 and a half inch barrel. I can't remember where I picked it up from. Gun nuts or something like that, probably. It goes into the receiver. Barrel nut 
So this time, I am going to finger tight this before I put it on this guy, which is probably correct, I'm thinking. Probably. So that's on there. That's not going to move. Let's uh, get this guy here on the barrel splines, just like that. Let's just double check the handguard. See if it lines up or actually will line up. If we look at the holes in the handguard, we got to come in that much more. So that's how much out of square we are. I'm not sure if you guys can see that in the video or not. But it looks like we have about maybe six to seven degrees left to go. So okay. I'm going to get Sean to push on the front of the Let barrel slightly. Let me take slightly. the phone out of the mountain. We'll show you more detail. Sure. Okay, here we are. So that's what we're looking at now. John, what do you want me to do? So when this when this handguard, I think this handguard's going to look badass on this thing. When I get the handguard lined up with the screw holes in the mounting bracket. See? You can see how much out she is. So that's all that we have to really do for torque. She's already hand tight and the barrel isn't moving in the receiver already. So take that out of the way. So what I'm going to get Sean to do is I'm going to be able to put a gentle amount of pressure here. Just a little bit. Enough to make sure that this stays inside that keyway and also has decent amount of pressure onto this receiver vise that's in here. The torque rod. Torque rod. Torque rod. Receiver vise. Sure. Torque rod. So you'll see here She's moving slightly on the torque rod, which is good. Give that a little bit of tweaking. And we'll check for alignment. Now, I'm not sure, you know, on AR, it's supposed to be 30 foot pounds of torque or something like that. See, now just that little extra bit gave us that much more. Right? So, according to MRA's instructions here, I was supposed to grease that barrel sleeve and everything else. Maybe I'll do that quick since before I get it all torqued on there. What do you think of that, Sean? Sounds good. Getting ahead of ourselves here. Oof, da. A little bit of... This is my favorite assembly lube. It's just a, a, a lithium-based grease. I prefer grease over oil. I'm weird. <laughs> it's not yet. No. I, like, I like the grease, yeah. Isn't that weird? I'm going to put just a little bit on the threads too. I use this stuff uh, for assembly lube on all kinds of stuff. And then, handy with the crank brush to make sure we get a good coating right there. We don't want this to gall up when we're assembling, right? Yeah. And you're metal on metal, so there's going to be friction, so you got to be careful. Yeah. And there's going to be... Uh, Lubrication's a good thing. Yeah, well, there's always time for lubrication. Is is there? <laughs> well, what's that movie called again? Evolution? Sure. I don't know. Remember from my youth. You were young once? I was once upon a time. Totally was a thing. Okay, so that's hand tight. Let's just double check this again. Make nope, sure I'm just still about where it was before. What do you think, Sean? That's about the same, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah, roughly. Okay. Give or take. Just gentle pressure on the muzzle there, please, and thank you. I don't want to torque too much on this. I guess once bitten, twice shy. <laughs> <laughs> Just a little bit left to go there. Let's see that. Left to go. General pressure again, Sean. I'm helping. She's getting pretty taut. Pretty taut. Like, I'm going to have to get a bigger wrench tight soon. There's always a bigger wrench. That oh. looks pretty decent. Yeah, and there's a little bit of slop in these holes, too, so I can get that lined up. Look at how. Okay, now, this is the cheapest handguard you can this buy. This is a wish anywhere. special. Yeah. And look at that, how well that lines up. Not that I'm going to use irons on this thing, but look at how well that lines up. <laughs> Isn't that fabulous? And, and it's decent quality. Um, you can tell it's cheap Chinesium, but still. It's $12. Exactly. So, okay, what's next? Okay, so this goes out of the way. Okay, so destructions. Oh, so they talk about a headspace check here. I've actually got a go no go gauge set for two two three. But what I gauge gauges gauges. 
But what I did, I checked the headspace, but this was a barrel that I'd previously headspaced with this bolt in a different rifle. So I was pretty confident the headspace wouldn't change. Um, so I just headspaced the bolt with this barrel. It's good to go. Um, so it says, yo, it says right here, to add a light coating of grease. <laughs> Perfect. Wow. <laughs> and inside the threads too. Wow. Wow. It says you're supposed to do some with some sort of fancy tool there that I don't have. <laughs> so I just didn't. I've got I've got the manually adjustable one. <coughs> okay. Uh, it says to use the gas port barrel cover. That's what this thing is, I'm assuming. So I've heard a lot of things on the internet how these are not that good. Suboptimal? Yeah. Well, I've got a thing that makes round things rounder over there. So if this thing ever decides to go south on us, uh, I'm pretty confident that I can... You've got a laugh? I'm going to laugh. Lathe, for those who don't get the joke. Yeah. So John's done with the torque rods. That's going back in its box and stored for further use on other receivers. Oh, and something else. Let's put the soft jaws back in here. Yes, you do need those. When he says soft jaws, he means... Cut the, plywood. <laughs> cuts plywood with the leather on it. Non-marring surfaces. This is just a third hand. It's not necessary for this kind of thing. One thing I'm going to do <clears throat> that it doesn't say to do in the instructions is I'm going to try and line this up so it's straight up and down. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to use... Oh, I guess I could use an angle finder, couldn't I? Let's do that. Let's get this in here. Okay, where were we? Where okay, were we so here? we're just gonna use the dial indicator here. We're right at zero degrees. So we'll move that up to here where that is. This is a completely unnecessary step, I it might is. add. This is a. It's probably not going to do anything at all to affect your group size or placement or grouping or. But it's completely one hundred and ten percent to make me feel better. Good enough. Good enough for government work. Good enough for you, maybe. <laughs> I have a reputation. <laughs> yes, you do. It's probably not a good one. <laughs> so it comes with these fancy three little bolts here. Let's see. Got to get the right bolt. The right uh, wrench. Sure. For the bolts. Did you get it? I don't think I did. If I had to guess. It looks like it's the right size, but all it does is spin. There we go. Just gonna get those in there nice and flat. We'll give this a try. If this moves or something like that, we can always pull off the handguard and yeah, readjust. Uh, and readjust or lock tight. Because all it does is cut off the gas system. Yeah, it doesn't actually do anything. Well, and if this breaks and, and it's a real POS, I can uh, I can make a, a ring to go on here. That if I was to make something, I would make it so it's it's tight, friction fit over top of here, and I would sit, put two set screws in the bottom. Is what I would do. Another option a guy has is he could take actually take a gas. <coughs> this is the gas cylinder that came off of there. Like I could put it on backwards, because this is the one with the hole. This one doesn't. Put it on backwards like that. Take the gas tube out of there. Yeah, but this will do. This will do. I think this will do just fine. I wonder, and this is, I guess, future considerations. If a company like IBI, they make AR-15 barrels. Would they produce a AR-15 barrel without a gas port? Right? Sure, you could ask Ryan. I'm sure that's... Fair enough money, he'll make anything. So. Well, that's true. The thing is, I, I wouldn't want to pay extra yeah. for them not to do something. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan, if you're watching... Yeah. There could be a single customer that wants this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Fire up the production yeah, line! For one guy. Yeah. I'm not even sure if they're probably even making AR-15 barrels right now, are they? I don't know. Okay, so that's that. Huh? That's nice and tight. This is nice and tight. Tight like a tiger. Okay, so. It says to install our chosen muzzle device. 
which is I put away that, that monstrosity. Uh, that's a Troy Claymore. I guess I put that away. Guess yeah, you're a little premature. Yeah, that's what all the ladies say about me. All of them. <laughs> <laughs> so crash washer that's been adequately crushed <laughs> it's been adequately it's probably perfectly sized at yes this point. we're just reusing it because we can at this point yeah, look at that it's that much off this would be perfect lots of crush and not Soda. Notice I'm using the same wrench as I was before. Mm. I'm going to pull back on this just a little bit, make sure this stays nice and tight on there. Does that look pretty straight up and down to you? Pretty decent. I pretty can nice. read the words Troy through the camera, so. Well, I could. <laughs> There's an arrow at the bottom. Ooh. That appears to be centered ish. So there we go, just like that. If you wish to use one. Now we're doing the bolt carrier assembly. So now there's a couple things about the bolt carrier assembly that uh, will make a difference on this kind of thing. Let's put this out of the way over here like that. <clears throat> so here's the AR bolt that came out of that other rifle. But <clears throat> there's a couple things you have to do to get this ready for you. What do you have to do, John? Well, you'll notice there's no gas rings on here. Mm. So if you read the manual, manual, the manual, blah, 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 blah. Note, if using a bolt assembly for a gas-driven carbine, remove the gas rings before inserting the bolt into the Renegade rear carrier. The gas rings must be removed for reliable and safe operation. An AR-15 bolt assembly with gas rings will not work in the Renegade. So, if you go through all this trouble and you don't do that, there's a chance that this will not go bang when you or will not cycle or whatever reliably. So let's uh let's get some There's always time for lubrication. This is dirty and I'm not gonna clean it. That's the idea. Get a little lube in there. There's always time for lubrication. Uh, so you, you've taken the gas rings out of that. Yeah, already. they're already off. I yes. took that off in preparation. Turn that sideways. Perfect. Good protrusion. Come on. Come on. There we go. It's in there. It's nice. It's good. Okay. Next up it says. Well, you could probably have done this first. But it says to attach these things. What is that thing? This is the thing that goes up here. The alignment block? I think so. Mm -hmm. What does it call it in the... Bah, 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 stir the fire. Okay, so... Oh, it says actually do it first. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> bolt carrier alignment block to the bolt carrier is the two grade 8 fasteners. These should be torqued to 50 inch pounds. Since there's no pressure being applied to this alignment block, there's no need to, for a thread rocker or staking the bolts. These guys. Ooh. I know what to do. My Wheeler Pendant Fat Wrench. The fatty wrench. Fat wench? Fatty wrench. Nope. These are all not the right size, are they? Nope, they're not. Probably metric. Yeah. I think they would have done that. Mm, I guess Canadian. we are in Canada. 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 It looks like these are one eighth of an inch. 
We'll get him started with this guy here. 50 inch pounds, hey? I'm going to torque that. I wonder if I've got a a different style of bit that would fit in there. We did it once before. Yeah. But it wasn't on camera then. Third hand. Don't look at the bits. <laughs> okay. These may or may not be Torx bits. <laughs> Neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> So 10, now 20. So you're doing that in increments. I always do. I, I could probably go from zero to 50 and have no ill effects whatsoever, but I don't know. I have to turn it one full revolution for 10 inch pounds anyway. Might as well one revolution torque, one revolution, right? This thing only goes to 60 inch pounds, but it works good for, oh, it's tight, tight like a tiger. But you don't want that coming loose, so. Don't want it coming loose for one thing. Uh, as an example, most scope bases torque to 18 foot pounds. Uh, 20 is usually a fair bit for that kind of stuff, right? Mm-hmm. Okay, so. Where's my? Wait, I threw the bar in the. Yes. Here, you know, I don't put it inside the container. Oh, that's one way of doing it. <laughs> okay. Okay. So that bolt is done. So the bolt is insert the carrier into the receiver. Uh. Secure the Renegade receiver and the device using the Renegade receiver jig or another compatible device. Be careful not to damage the finish of the receiver. Apply grease to the bolt carry outside rails and insert the bolt carrier assembly into the receiver. Always time for lubrication. That's right. <laughs> Big fan. Big fan! I'm thinking about doing it this way for, well, the lube. Okay. So. Lubrication. Lubrication. So I'm going to lube up the inside here. This is my patented uh, grease application Is device. it patent pending? I don't know. I bought it at the dollar store, like a four pack, like eight years ago, and I'm still on like the second brush, so. So you're. I you're, get a lot of lifespan yeah. on these things. You're uh, lubricating the rails as detailed in the instructions. Uh, not, no, the instructions actually say only to lubricate oh. the, uh, the bolt. Um, I, one of those guys that's always going to lube stuff. You can never over, over lube something. I'm always going to lube it like crazy. Now, obviously, like just like an, a standard AR carrier, this is going to need some sort of lubrication. These rails, because that's actually the bearing surface, right? That's the way they stick out the way they do. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm going to lube the crap out of this guy here. I'm going to lube this guy here. Why? Because I can. Because I can. That's why. And then... Go home, Bolt. This could be interesting. Yeah, don't do that. Here, plastic. Shut down. It's a great video. Is it? Yeah. Riveting. No, we're actually screwing. Hey. Yeah. Nice and tight. It goes into battery. Closes up good. I forgot something. I just saw it on the bench. I forgot something. So you see the spring? You mean that spring right there? Yeah. Do you know what it's for? Uh, yes, but why don't you tell us? <laughs> <laughs> so on the back of the... The firing pin? The back of the bolt. So it's, it's going to give you a little bit of a help or push mm -hmm. when you're oh, manually racking it in a battery. Yeah. At least that's the idea. That's the theory? That's the theory. The film theory. No. <laughs> YouTube joke. Was it? Didn't get it. Is it really? I guess. 
Okay. Calendar. There we go. Yeah, nope. Shot, shot. Just like that. I feel like I should be lubing more stuff. Well, you can always lube it later. I'm lubing it now. <laughs> See, and I over -lube. Just like that. It's like so obvious. Get that off of there. That off of there. That's why kids use oil. <laughs> okay, so we see here on the bottom, these here rails here on the, uh, I guess the top side of them, because we're looking in from the bottom right now. Let me give those a little loop. Just like that. Just so it, see, because this all rubbed all that lube off of there, off of these rails. So I'm not sure in the future how much of a difference this is going to make, but this is like uh, brand new anodizing on brand new. I'm not sure what kind of coating this is. I don't. I don't think it's Cerakote. It might be blue. But that's what those bolt rails. And you'll notice it's all almost all gone from there, right? Which well, means, it's gonna. John. Which means it's attaching to the. It's it's. A dispersing from here to the anodizing right so i'm just making sure the anodizing especially for break-in has lots of lube on it that's probably enough i'm not going to do another coat after that so after this the next time we take this thing apart it'll probably be like 100 rounds of a darn thing so okay carrier in a receiver so So this is where I'm going to differ from most of the guys on the internet that have done this. They put this on the left-hand side of the receiver. And I think the idea behind that is, if you were running and gunning an AR, you'd have that AR up by patented the loose barrel now. You'd have that AR up, and you'd be shooting, and if you were, you'd want to stay on target to do a mag change or something like that. And that's why they or want to keep doing this, right? Or, or. Well, one thing that a lot of these guys that I've seen on the internet that put the charging handle on the left-hand side, what they're forgetting is that this is a bolt gun. So when you're operating a bolt-action rifle, you're used to doing this and rolling the bolt over. So what's the difference if you're doing this, right? Which is another reason why I thought I'd like, I'm, I'm very a non-ambi guy. I like my safety on this side of my ARs. But my first time thinking about it, I was like, this is where I want my safety is right here because when I operate that bolt, I'm not going to grab the rifle like this. I'm going to grab it like this. And this is where I want my safety is right here. Right? Okay. So, That's your opinion. And you're, opinion. you're entitled to it. And I'm the one assembling this rifle. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so another thing I'm going to do that it doesn't say to do in the instructions is I'm going to add just a little bit of lubrication right there and right there. Just in case... There's a little bit of uh, clearance issues where it drop where this drops into this notch, right? Now I've got a little bit of grease on there, so if there is a little bit of uh, metal on metal contact, it's not going to bind. It's just going to it's just going to slide. At least that's the theory. right down in the middle now are there any torque specs on this particular fastener well maybe there should be some bottomed out all right receiver vice uh, apply grease the bulk here it's on it's all, it's all two dowel pins in the charging handle it's still on the left or right hand side of the car using the socket head cap screw hmm I doing something wrong. Let's see. So this is tight. Try to lift up on it down on that bolt handle. What is loose? Well, that it's okay. That's fine, in my opinion. Is it? Oh, you want that tight, don't you? 
we're bonding them out in the in the blind hole inside the oh now I got grease all over this pin. I don't know if I want grease on that pin. You can see uh, there's a little couple of little marks right here on mm -hmm. the edge where it's binding on there. What's the thread pitch on this? Okay, after doing some gazintas, we got her in. Yep. There, she's nice and tight now. Tight. Okay. Okay. Now on to the buffer. Okay, so. So this should be like a standard. A standard? R, R15. R15, yep. Not an R16. Assault rifle 15. No, whoa. 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 Shut up your mouth. <clears throat> so obviously this part goes up now. And the, this is a proprietary part because there's no... Um, it's not covering anything. That's right. What's the part called? I'm yep. tired. Buffer tube? Yeah, but you're not blocking. You don't need to block the hole. No, we don't need to block the hole. We don't have to do anything, really, at this point. It's kind of straightforward, right? Mm-hmm. This goes in there. So now, here's one thing that you're going to do, not do, that you would do with an AR. So with an AR, you're going to torque this on, right? And then you're going to stake that, that castle nut there. You don't want to do that because that's how you disassemble this rifle to do something to clean that or whatever else, yeah. right? So you're going to want to leave that off, right? So where's my fancy wrench? My fancy wrench. I maybe could have cleaned up a little bit better. Well, I've got this big son of a gun, but I don't like using it. I've got another tool. Another tool. At least I thought I did. I may have a few extra spare parts, you think? A little bit. Oh, I'm not filming that drawer. Maybe. That's a good idea. Um, I guess I'm using this guy. Didn't want to. Doesn't matter. But I guess I am. So instead of torquing on this, well, it's like this. I'm going to relocate so that I'm actually gripping on the receiver. And I'm going to grip on the receiver on the only two flat edges that are really available to me. And I'm not going to torque the ever loving P out of this either. I'm just going to do a little gentle persuasion. Enough that it's not going to move. All right? There we go. That's it, more or less. That's one a, more piece to install. One more. more piece to really finish it off. Wish special. Okay, so is this baggie of parts? So these wish handguards, they're cheap. They're like twelve bucks, right? And they take forever to get here because they go on a slow boat from China. But what's really nice is they come with these friggin' washers. I'm not sure. If Shims. Maybe, Maybe that's not maybe they're that's not nice that they actually come with those, but I I find it very handy that they come with those. It also comes with an Allen key because I don't have any other Allen key to, in my entire toolbox that will fit <laughs> this particular screw head. So I really like the look of that. Like what what about that makes me just so excited? So that's a 14 and a half inch barrel, 15 inch handguard. So Back out of the way, he says. There you go, guys. That's a BCM foregrip, correct? A what? BCM. This? This is Magpul. Oh, it is Magpul. Yeah, drink the Kool-Aid. That's okay. I'm a Magpul fan. Oh, well. yeah. As, as the Kool-Aid man would say. <laughs> Or wait, was that Macho Man? Macho Man already said it. I can't remember. Why a child? Oh no, oh no! Oh yeah! You'll notice I haven't tightened up any of these bolts yet. They're all just kind of gooshy gooshy. There's a reason for that. Because you'll, as you can tell, there's a bit of play in the handguard. Well, we are dealing with the finest Chinese materials here, so. Like 
I don't know. Here's the optic I'm going to be putting on this thing. What is it? This is a Bushnell AR223 1 to 4. With what mount? Uh, I don't know. I painted it. <laughs> I think it's a loophole. Okay. If I had to guess, it's a loophole. Now, why did you put it there? I put it over there to bridge the gap. Yes. So now I know that the rail is more or less right where it needs to be. Now I can torque these screws on and be relatively assured that they're not going to move. At least that's the idea. Slide that up. So I might paint this one of these days. <laughs> why would you paint my rifle? Because <laughs> why not? <laughs> I guess you're probably going to take it home with you, aren't you? <laughs> you're not going to leave it unsupervised. It'll wind up with the yeah. desert camo paint job. <laughs> Remember when I did that? You're like, what the fuck did you do? <laughs> Why did you do that? <laughs> okay, it doesn't look too bad. <laughs> okay, I guess it's okay. It grew on me like cancer. Yeah, yeah that's right. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Like that cyst. Yeah. That's funny. You could probably torque these if you wanted to, if you had an Allen key that would fit in your torque wrench. You could probably torque these to a certain spec and away you go. So all in here, we're under like a we're under an hour assembling this thing. Yeah. Now granted, this is our second kick at the can, but wow. out of the box. Yeah. Out of the box, we're an hour in. So we just have to mount some sights over here. We got some sights over here. Oh. Yeah, but that's let's let's put it together first. Can we? Yeah, I guess we can put it together for show the people what it gonna show look the like. Peeps. Oh, it's nice. It feels tight. It looks tight. It sounds tight. Give her a good rack. See if she goes quick. Full safety, it's empty, by the way. I did if I checked it already. Right. Safety on. Actually, that's going to work out really well. It's almost like an infield. Kind of same manual of arms. I know? don't know. Except you're not rotating anything. You're just well, you know, you think about it, like the the old infield, the way that you would do the Mad Minute was you'd actually use your middle finger as a trigger finger, and you'd close the bolt, and then close the bolt, and then pull the trigger, and not let go of the bolt, and then up. Right? So you could do something similar to that. I don't know. No, there's too much gap. The guy's got to get there. Yeah, right? there's Which too is much a gap. long ways to go. That is a that is a nice looking rig. Went together actually fairly easy too. It was probably actually easier to put together because of the manual than an AR-15 was. I remember the first one put together an AR-15 and it was it was bad. Pretty cool guys. So if you want yours, they're sold widely across Canada. Um, check, but check out Red Deer Shooting Center, rdsc.ca. Well, I probably should hide that. Oh well. It's not to hide nothing. You just gotta wipe it off. Yeah. No, the serial number. Oh, oh whatever. It doesn't matter. Does but it? it is a nice piece of kit. Gets you practicing. Gets you non-restricted. Check them out, Maple Ridge Armory, Red Deer Shooting Center. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments. Yeah. Thanks, John. Appreciate no problem, it, buddy. buddy. Anytime. We'll see you guys next time.